Nothing screams jungle diff like when you are having a horrific early game and you still come out at 40 minutes or 20 minutes with the lead, you carry and you make the enemy jungler lose all hope to play the game. So if you are having bad starts, either through something weird the enemy team is doing or something bad that you are doing, I'm going to give you the five steps for you to make a comeback and carry the games where you don't think you can actually win. Because guess what? You climb to your dream rank not by winning the games you should, but by winning the games you shouldn't. And as you can see from our first example here, tragedy occurs. Our Viego is simply doing his right when the enemy pike support shows up and pushes him out. This is something you cannot ever deal with. But one of the most important principles that will apply to any of these situations is ensure you do not go where the enemy jungler is and do not face check things that are also an unknown. There is a little bit of risk in coming back into the game, but watch this. The Viego goes to the walls. Let's rewind quickly. Where was the enemy jungler while he was being invaded? On her red. If you simply F key and look at the ward that you have, you see where she paths. Okay, it looks like that Nefiri might invade the Viego on his blue side. So what a Viego does is not greed for the blue or the grump or something big thick that's going to take 10 years to do. We guarantee our snack on the walls. The Viego here understands that there's a distinct possibility that Nefiri does this, and so going for these camps would just be a little bit griefy. The same thing happened to me when I was playing my Zyra jungle game way before anyone else ever played it, as always, and I was being invaded by the enemy. And so what did I do? I moved on to do my walls. I did my grump to have good sequencing. As I'm doing the blue, the enemy mid laner shows up and I have to path away. And if the first step is just be where the enemy jungler isn't, that's where there's a difference here between the Viego's game, which you can guess the rank of, I'll explain at the end, and my Zyra game. What happens is I know the enemy jungle is on the top side, so I know I can take my blue side quadrant. I then know that the guy most likely will gain top side, and so I can take a lot of time going to his red side with a little bit of risk maybe, snack those camps up and gank bottom lane. And we will also look at a challenger example just to showcase a wide variety of examples in this video. But you see the Viego now goes after the walls to the top side. The Viego doesn't know for certain what exactly the Nefiri is doing, but why even coin flip something when you guaranteed know she's not on your top side? So at the very least, you can take your Raptors and your Krugs and get level 3. And then you can go ahead and do your red. It's important to get that level 3, have good sequencing, and do your red last. If you do Wolves, Raptors, Red, guess what? What if you get cheesed again? You're level 2, taking a big buff. You're not going to have your E for attack speed. So do the Krugs, have better sequencing, add better safety when you fall back to the red. Now, if some of this isn't exactly making sense, this game was directly from one of our coaching classes. So if you want to join that and have access to all the fundamentals and knowledge you need to climb as fast as possible, you absolutely must head to vikayu.gg. Not only do I have a free jungle improvement resource, I also have a dedicated program with jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching classes, a jungle VOD library, special weekly content you'll see nowhere else. All of this available through a premium jungle discord, which is highly active, a huge community that help each other climb using my jungle program and courses. As we have seen by everybody hitting their peak rank goals in Split 1 and Split 2 of Season 14 as fast as possible. So to climb faster than everybody you know and to jungle diff every game you play, head to vakaya.gg or click the link in the description below. And so here's where I disagreed with the Viego's choice. He's coming out of the Krugs going to the top scuttle, correct? However, we saw Nefuri get a gank off on the bottom lane. Also correct, we saw her go into the bush and go back to base. F keys will give you this information. After she goes back to base, where do you think she's going to go next? To the bottom side where she has raptors, krugs, and one scuttle, or to the top side where she knows you are, and she has three camps plus a scuttle as well. And then the Fury does a good job of knowing, okay, hey, the Viego's top side, I can go outside and roll straight to the scuttle before my camps, so if he is there, I can use my item advantage to push him off, which is exactly what she does. And now the Viego's stuck in a very difficult place. Because he tries to shatter the Nefiri, she will go and double scuttle on the bottom side. This is not a good play by her, but she's going to do it nonetheless. If you do not want to go back to base up to Krugs, reset, control the bottom scuttle, give Nefiri her top side, counter jungle her red side, gank the bottom lane, and then fall back to your blue side, which would be the second step here, controlling your jungle with smart vision, smart pathing, try to regain control of the camp's pressure that you have lost through the cheese, through the unluckiness, through the badness. What you can do if you don't like that play is to stay out, guess for that scuttle crab like the Viego did, move around to Shadow the Nefiri like the Viego did, but instead of crossing mid lane with her, observe where she goes. If she goes mid lane and ganks and then paths down, be aligned to her top side, take those camps as quickly as you can, base and then try and control your blue side camps, or stay out and impact top lane if the lane state presents itself in such a way. 
The second step for my example here was, hey, I now vertical jungled because I knew where the volley was. I've ganked bottom lane. Now I can reset and recontrol the spawn of my topside camps and path down. And basically I've already normalized the bad start. And if the volley bear has no idea what his timers are, guess what? I'm gonna get the respawn of his bottom side as well, more ganks on the bottom side, and basically from there, snowball the game in a regular way. I've offset the bad start already. In Viego's case now, there's a bit of a risk factor because we went back to base on vision. We know the Nefiri's on the bottom side. You are forced into a very protective, a very regular clear. You're just gonna get your wolves, Gromp, swap all the way over to the top side, get those respawn raptors and krugs, maximize the experience and recontrol your camps, right? That's step two, but we're doing it later than if we made a different decision. We're doing it later than I did in the Zyra example. And you will see in the challenger example, there's a lot more pressure and difficulty in actually controlling your camps because the challenger junglers, grandmaster junglers know to keep applying pressure, right? So they're not gonna allow you to just chill and do a full clear. But here is where patience comes in. If the Viego has negative map state, no ganks available, cannot contest the grubs, you gotta go back to base, gank bottom lane, try to do a dragon, and then potentially counter jungle if the Nefuri stays topside. However, if you do have prior, this is step three. Punish the enemy jungler's greed, their mistakes, and counter jungle and gank safely. Really, this is the most fluid concept because it could be very different. You're gonna see exactly that with the Silas having prior, they get to collapse and take all the grubs. Hooray, huzzah. But we also could have counter jungled the Nefuri's mistake when she went to double scuttle. She decided to leave her whole topside quadrant available to the Viego and he could have actually gone and stolen that. That's a mistake we missed and that's a mistake we didn't punish. However, this one, the Nefuri greets her grubs thinking, hey, I'm 2-0-0, zero, zero. I've ruined the Viego's day. But Viego has done a great job of the first two steps and now punishing her mistakes is very, very easy. And you will find from both my example here and the Viego's how quick and easy it is to get through the steps if you adhere to them very strictly. And now once the Viego's done this, right, we get some deep vision topside, we know the camps are down, but it gives us an RNG scuttle. Now because the Nefiri has died one time and will be forced to be somewhere else, we know on the bottom side, maybe a dragon, maybe farming, who knows, you can gank mid lane. If you can contest a dragon, do so and kill her. If you can then gank bot lane, do so. That's why I said go ahead and gank safely because that directly will come from you actually making those good plays beforehand. If you have great control of your camps, if you do not go where the enemy jungler is when they have that advantage, if you then punish their mistakes, that creates downtime and negative time for the enemy jungler who has the lead. And as long as you maximize that moment like this Viego did into three straight ganks, into a base, into another full sequence because there's no objectives we need to worry about. All of a sudden, you've slingshotted yourself into the lead. And in highlights, just to showcase the end of this, because I want to really get into the nitty gritty of our main example here to showcase a higher level of play, the Viego is able to simply take control of the grubs, repeat gank other lanes, get dragons, and it's all regular jungling as if he had the lead the whole time. He is offset it. And that's really step four, right? Once you have done the first three steps, make your presence felt once you are caught up by actually playing on the map. And we kind of did that with the ganks there. We did that with the second grub spawn. We did that with the rest of the activity we've had. And then the final step is now that you've done everything, even if you're a bit behind your markers at 14 minutes, you know, we want level 10, 6,000 gold. Even if you have spent the whole time recovering, as long as you have more of those stats than the enemy jungler, you can then go ahead and play the game normally macro wise. Split pushing, picks, barons, dragons, there's absolutely nothing holding you back. But let's now jump to our high elo example to showcase this in a more fluid way now that we've broken it down step by step. And by the way, that was an emerald level game with Viego, a little bit of diamond MMR, a little bit of plat MMR, nice good average. And as you're watching a brand be Omega fisted outside of his jungle by a Karthus, yes, you heard that right. That's the kind of discipline we like to use in the Vakayo.gg private discord, really teaching people these kinds of steps and that mental power to really control any sort of game state you might find yourself in. And as you can see from the brand respawning after his unfortunate death, he is failing step one. Don't go where the enemy is currently and don't face jack. There are too many unknowns at this stage, but we do have wards on the bottom side. Just go into your blue side. If the Karthus goes ahead and actually vertical jungles you, that's fine. I'm happy to vertical jungle when I'm behind from an early death or really compromise my clear tempo. That's the whole point of step one. And because he doesn't do this, all of a sudden there's Karthus invading with knowledge and killing him again. 0-2-0 zero zero for our high elo brand. And again, this kind of scenario is amazing. These kind of step videos are amazing. Why? Because you could be absolutely any jungler in this situation. A mage, an assassin, a fighter, a tank. You find yourself in these positions on everything and anything. Fortunately, however, the brand decides to enact step one here and says, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to go to the blue side quadrant. 
I can get level 3, I can control everything, I will go where there is no jungler and I will not face check. Great. Keep your eyes on the map and obviously extrapolate a little bit where his Karf was going to go after he took his blue, invaded my red side. He's going to go back and sequence down, he's going to try and control the scuttle crabs. You can't face check the river, that's also part of step 1, right? Don't face check that fog of war, the land of Mordor will come out and grasp you. Yeah, I get the irony that he's brand, but you know, we can ignore that for a second. The other thing that we can do, and if you apply step 2 to this, it makes sense, is in theory now we would want to go to the top side, right? To protect all of our camps. The problem is, my friends, is all your camps are down. There's no scuttles you can really take. Maybe the top scuttle, but is that worth crossing over? You also only have the Krog camp. You've already controlled most of your camps, even though you died twice. So here's where you can kind of use step three a little bit early on. Why not slide into the side bush here, unseen, unknown. If the enemy jungler doesn't track you or anticipate this move properly, you kind of gank them. If they don't even show up, you just get a free gank anyway. While we want to punish the enemy jungler's mistakes, counter jungle, we also, as I said, want to gank safely. And the safe gank here is, I've already done step one to two in a very quick succession, can I gank safely here and actually get some kills? Now he does this successfully, and of course the Karthus still gets a kill. However, this is great for us because now we can go back to step two, right? Controlling our camps. You come out of base, you've got faded ashes, your Krugs are gonna spawn, your Raptors are gonna spawn, your Wolves into your Grom. We simply, like the Viego, wanna do a nice full sequence, controlling all our camps and preventing any more counter jungling, okay? That's it, we're not looking to go into the rivers, face check the unknown, step one applies all the time. That's the thing, each step always applies. But if the Karthus gets over aggressive and decides, hey, <laughs> I want your Raptors, well, you just gotta kill him. And if you can't kill him and you're by yourself and he is pushing you out, what do you do? You accept it and you leave. If you can kill them, kill them. If you can't, which is most likely the case because it's a recovering from bad start video, you leave. You go to your wolves, you go to your grom. If you have timers on his bottom side camps, you could go ahead and steal those. If you can solo the dragon because he's going to want to do the Schund Raupen on the top side, then by all means look to counter jungle and punish his mistakes that way. But because you adhere to these things properly, the enemy jungler, even with their lead, has to choose what to focus on, and then you just go and do the thing that they're not looking at. Much like the Eye of Mordor, he treated the same way. Now here, if he doesn't feel comfortable doing the dragon for contests, and he tries to gank bottom lane, again, that's fine. But we don't quite gank safely. Enemy mid rotates. Turns out you can nerve some champions, but they'll still robe and kill you. Here's the thing, though. The whole thing about these five steps has been the different amount of time you spend in each one. Here we went through steps one to three very, very quickly. But step four, in terms of making our presence felt once we're caught up with ganks and objectives, that hasn't happened yet. So what we're forced to do here as brand is sequence top to bottom yet again. We're simply applying step two. There's nothing really we can do about step three if the enemy jungler doesn't make any mistakes. He's going to get a free dragon. Now the map is king and we cannot do anything about the dragon. So we're going to go back to base and prepare to sequence and control our camps again. Doesn't matter what jungler you're playing, think like this. Because the sooner you accept that you just have to chill for a little bit, the sooner your step four and five are going to be really, really powerful. Because we give up the dragon, our Karthus has to spend time on it, and we don't really have our next sequence yet respawning, we can afford ourselves a lot more liberty to move around the top side, to try and gank the top laner, to counter jungle the top side camps if they're up, to look for other plays without the Karthus getting in our face. And because there's such a big downtime, you can really invest in a nice heavy ganking rotation, much like the Viagra did. You'll notice a brand's been passing top to bottom. However, we kind of want to set up for Herald and maybe some second grubs. So we try and counter jungle nothing. We try and gank nothing. We try and gank bottom lane. Maybe we get something. We move back up to the mid lane. You are simply looking for a great play to be made. And if the enemy jungle is playing well, there's going to be not a lot for you to do, but you're not losing anything either, right? And now instead of pathing top to bottom, you swap sequence because you spent great time on the downtime. You look for great plays. Sometimes you get three kills. Sometimes you only get one assist. Now you can go grump all the way to the top. And if you have to give up the grubs, you have to give up the grubs. If you can cut in and contest, do so. But if you cannot, don't. Accept it. Take your camps, control them, step two always, and then maybe see if you can gank or invade now. And of course, here we can. And this is where you apply step four and step five again. You now use a little bit of that lead that you've had to try and go win fights over dragons. You try and make play some rails. You try and get the Herald. You're just seeing a few quick clips of that. Yeah, we die again, but that's the Gnar making a TP. The whole idea is that we've at least normalized the differential between the junglers and we have great lanes in great positions because we didn't, one, suffer in silence and just complain in AFK. We decided to play the map, respect the map, and make impact when we could, and we didn't die unnecessarily. You know, he died twice within the first level or two, and all of a sudden he's only died twice 
twice since then, and honestly, one of those has really got nothing to do with him. If we jump back to the Viego game here, and the brand of course did win this game, I'll leave the match history link in the description, you can see how once you understand step one to three, cycling them, repeating them, adhering to one more than the other, as long as you understand how to actually apply that pressure to the map in a regular way, as if you're playing a normal game, without being too conservative, you will find yourself in great positions to still carry, win, and climb by focusing these objectives and grouping and playing very, very normally. And if you're struggling a little bit on, you know, maybe this mid to late game transition, you're not sure how to actually maximize your early game for your chosen MMR, the video on your screen will absolutely streamline this process. 